Welcome, everybody. I'd like to talk about polynomial algorithms versus strongly polynomial algorithms. Um, this is the sense in which the ellipsoid method solves a linear program in polynomial time. However, it doesn't solve linear programs in strongly polynomial time. Um, this stuff is quite new to me, but I think it's really fascinating and I'd like to learn more about it. I think I've, um, you know, the intuitive descriptions of what it means for an algorithm to be polynomial so far has not been fully accurate. And so now's a, a chance for me to hopefully uh, correct the record or at least improve the record a little bit. So a polynomial time running, uh, a polynomial time algorithm should have runtime, which is bounded from above by a polynomial in terms of, you know, some input size. So the input size is your input to the polynomial, you evaluate your polynomial, and then the running time has to be at most that much. But a big question is how do you measure size of an input, okay? So for a linear programming problem, we have n variables, m constraints. So one notion of input size might be n and m, right? That's I think how I present it so far. But for our definition of a polynomial algorithm will in fact represent the input size in terms of the number of bits needed to store the matrices and the vectors, right? So it won't be n the number of equations or m the number of, sorry, it won't be n the number of variables or m the number of equations. The input size is gonna be the total number of bits needed to represent every single number in the matrix. So if your matrix has super large entries, you know, that's a larger input size than if it's a matrix of the same size where all the entries are zeros and ones. We need a little notation for this. Um, the bit size of an in integer i is, um, here's the notation, this angle bracket i. And it's just the number of bits of i when you write that integer in binary. So that's what this expression is. Apparently this is the number of bits needed when you write this integer i in binary. Plus one, we're gonna add in that one so that we can encode the sign of a number with one more extra bit, you know, positive or negative. So an example, what's the bit size of 1,234? We, we write it in binary, so um, here we have the zeros digit, it's even, so the zeros digit is zero, and, oh, sorry, the ones digit, <laughs> we have the ones digit, which is zero, because this number, one, two, three, four is even, and then we have two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, one twenty-eight, uh, two fifty-six, 512, 1024, okay? So this digit, the first digit is the 1024 digit. And then we keep going, adding other powers of two until we get up to 1,234. All right. So we have 11 digits in binary. So that's where this 11 is coming from. And then we have one more extra bit just to encode is it positive or negative. Questions about bit size? Rational numbers have bit sizes. You can, so a rational number is just a fraction of two integers and you can almost think of that as like a vector of two integers, as long as you remember that it's supposed to be the top integer divided by the second. And so we define the bit size of this rational number as just the sum of the bit size of the numerator plus the bit size of the denominator. And similarly, we define a bit size for a vector. So the bit size of a vector is just a sum of the bit sizes of all its entries and same for a matrix. 
the bit size of a matrix is the sum of the bit sizes of all of its entries. And then if we have a linear program, maximize C transpose X, subject to AX is at most B with rational entries, its input size is going to be the sum of all the bit sizes of the entries of matrix A plus the sum of all the bit sizes of the entries of vector B plus the sum of all the bit sizes of the entries of, of vector C. Rational is interesting here. You don't really think of um, the inputs to a linear program as needing to be rational. You know, they don't. But any linear program, you can approximate it super well with a rational one. And if you're implementing things on a computer, you know, you can't store an arbitrary irrational number on a computer. You have to like stop writing down decimal points at some point, at which point it's, it's rational. So this is going to be the input size for polynomial algorithms, this bit size. And this is the sense in which the ellipsoid algorithm is going to be polynomial. So an algorithm for linear programming is polynomial. If we have a fixed polynomial P, you know, so this looks something like, it might be um, 17,543 times X to the fifth plus you know, 12 X to the fourth plus, yeah. could be something like that, polynomial in X. So a linear programming algorithm is polynomial. If we have a fixed polynomial, such that for all linear programs with rational coefficients, the algorithm requires at most the polynomial applied to the size of the input many steps. So we take the input size and we plug that into X in all of these terms. So in particular, if our polynomial is a degree five, we take this potentially large input size and raise it to the fifth power, okay? And, and the algorithm has to take at most that many steps. Steps here are in terms of bit operations. So for example, adding two numbers is not just one step. Adding two numbers depends on the size of those numbers. Adding two k-bit integers requires at least k steps because you have to go through the, the k bits and you know, sort of combine those. Carrying ones. I, I do know how to do addition. All right. So let me try to clarify polynomial algorithms by talking about Gaussian elimination. You've learned Gaussian elimination, right? You take a matrix and put it in row reduced echelon form just to solve AX equals B. Okay, so we're, we're moving away from linear programming and we're just talking about linear algebra. So if you have a, let's, let's pretend we have a square matrix. It's size n by n. Okay, I'm, I'm making it square for convenience. And pretend it has, um, well, yeah, rational entries. So the number of arithmetic operations, so not the number of bit operations, but the number of times you need to add things. So adding two k bit numbers would just be one step, not k steps, right? The number of arithmetic operations needed for Gaussian elimination is cubic. It's at most some constant times n cubed, you know, where n is the size of our matrix. Not the bit size of our matrix, but just the number of rows and columns. Okay. So the, the algorithm for Gaussian elimination that you know and love is polynomial in terms of the number, the size of the matrix, you know, the number of rows and columns and the number of arithmetic operations needed. The naive implementation that you know for Gaussian elimination is not polynomial in terms of the bit size, okay? So you can have entries of a matrix, which are all small, like, you know, from zero up to 10. So small entries of the matrix in terms of bit size. And if you do this naive implementation of Gaussian elim elimination, you can get 
entries in your matrix that are of a factor two to the n times larger than the integers you started with in your matrix. So you have small integers in your matrix, but you perform Gaussian elimination and the uh, bit sizes of your integers just blows up, okay? So, so that gives an exponential algorithm in terms of bit size, okay? There are, however, smarter implementations of, of Gaussian elimination that avoid that. They're polynomial both in this sense and polynomial in the sense of bit size, which I, which I sort of defined for linear programming right here. It's getting, it's getting a little confusing, but we have two sort of notions of polynomial. We have this definition, which is the input size is bit size and the number of steps is the number of bit steps, okay? And then we have this other notion, which is the input size is the number of rows and columns and addition just is one step, no matter how large the, uh, the numbers you're adding are. Okay, so the ellipsoid and interior point methods for solving linear programs are polynomial in the sense defined at the top of this page in terms of bit size. Okay, so the number of bit steps needed is polynomial in terms of the input size in bits for both in ellipsoid and interior point methods solving linear programs. Let me tell you what a strongly polynomial algorithm is. It's polynomial in the sense of bit size and polynomial also in the sense of rows and columns where each arithmetic operation is just one step. So this is an informal definition but a strongly polynomial algorithm is first of all polynomial in the sense above in terms of bit size and furthermore polynomial in terms of the number of arithmetic operations. You might care more about the number of arithmetic operations that are performed. That might be more closely related to the running time on your computer. And the reason is because if, if your numbers in terms of bit size are small enough, then your computer has efficient implementations of addition that's really just one step, you know, up up to integers of a bounded size. Okay. But if the integers get arbitrarily large, as we saw for naive implementations of Gaussian elimination, that definitely slows down the runtime. Gaussian elimination is strongly polynomial. Smart implementations are polynomial in terms of bit size. And furthermore, the number of ar arithmetic operations is bounded by a cubic uh, polynomial in terms of the number of rows and columns. Of your, of your matrix. So, you know, this cubic number of steps is saying that adding inputs with 10 bits is no different than adding inputs with a million bits. So a strongly polynomial algorithm for linear programming would be polynomial as defined above in terms of bit size and also require a polynomial, at most a polynomial number of number of arithmetic operations, addition steps, where P is another polynomial. And it's an open problem whether strongly polynomial algorithms for linear programming exist. Okay. So yes, linear programming is quite fast, but it's not as fast as Gaussian elimination in this sense. Gaussian elimination is both polynomial and strongly polynomial. Linear programming is polynomial in terms of bit size, but not strongly polynomial. Um, so no strongly polynomial algorithm is known for linear programming. The ellipsoid method is not strongly polynomial. I'd like to learn about these examples. Um, so if anyone wants to learn about this and report back, I'd be super interested. How do we show that the ellipsoid method is not strongly polynomial? For any integer k, you know, take k to be a million or a billion or a trillion, we can find a linear programming problem 
it only has two variables and two constraints. Okay, so two variables, two constraints. It's like a two by two matrix capital A. And the ellipsoid method requires capital K arithmetic steps. Okay, so it's a two by two matrix, but you can require as many arithmetic steps as you want, as many addition steps. This, this doesn't break the fact that the ellipsoid method is polynomial in terms of bit size, because these examples, if you want K to be larger and larger, if you want to require more and more addition steps, the entries of your matrix go to infinity as K goes to infinity. So the integers that appear in your two by two matrix are getting really, really large, which means that the input size in terms of bit size is also getting really large. Right? So if you measure running time where the input is bit size, you're still polynomial. But in terms of arithmetic sense, uh, in, in terms of the number of arithmetic steps, uh, yeah, we, we still have a matrix of four numbers, two by two, but we're requiring arbitrarily many addition steps. OK, any questions? Thanks so much.